here that I just met, but we're acting like we go back. It's 3 a.m., but we ain't done yet. Trying our best to make it last. Freedom running through us like an open. We're too high on being young and they still to race. We got the rest of our lives for the rest of our lives. And the rest of tonight for whatever feels right. We're doing it our way, just acting our age. One day we'll look back just shaking our heads. But right now we're too fast to slow down. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two teams will need their quarterbacks to step up and lead their offenses on the gridiron today. It's Smith's Chiefs going up against Roethlisberger's Steelers. With kickoff straight ahead, let's check in with the two men who will be calling tonight's game. As we say hello to Brandon Guy and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the steel capital of the world, Pittsburgh, PA, and Heinz Field. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Shift together here from the D-line. Charles the low set back. And the head coach reaches for the red flag, tosses it down on the field. He wants a challenge here. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. It is a cup. And oh, his first carry, he loses the football. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And he will bring it back to about the 11 yard line. As you and I both know, one reason teams script plays to start a game is so they can practice them ahead of time. I will guarantee you, that fumble was not in the script. You don't think they had fumble written next to play one there? No, that was never in the script because they want to have good memories when they go into a ball game, not something that could have gone wrong. The Pro Bowler is a rookie, Marcus Peters, there on the stop. Offensive starters time. Electric is certainly a word that comes to mind when you talk about Le'Veon Bell. Love the way that he reshaped his body coming out. Of and he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. Over the middle here to Brown. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. They don't want to waste his outstanding field position on this opening drive as they come up on third down. On third down, Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Antonio Brown, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Steelers have taken a first quarter lead. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he will take a knee here. So per the new rules in 2016, this will be brought out to the 25-yard line. They come out here in the eye. They'll start the drive with Jamal Charles. And he's not going anywhere 
to start tonight. They stop him at the line of scrimmage. James Harrison, the veteran, in on the stop. This is the offense we're going to see coming up in this one, and Travis Kelsey will be key. What a tremendous weapon he is, especially in the red zone. Knows how to find the end zone when running his routes. Here's Smith now on second down. And he's got the hookup for the first time with a veteran, Jeremy Macklin. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. A really nice read by the offense. They caught the defense not covering the middle of the field, went to the post route, and found the receiver wide open for a nice game. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And now the ball's out. Fumbled near midfield. And they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. On second down, Roethlisberger, a screen to Bell. And he'll get it down here to the 43. It'll be a pickup of 13 on the play. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. And the Chiefs showing a dime look as they defend this third down. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. Looking middle, and that's complete. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic, so anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the football. You're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always some... Now Bell hit. He lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. So after nearly turning it over, new life here for the offense on second down. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Here's Roethlisberger. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. And let's take a look at the defensive starters for Kansas City. Justin Houston is truly one of the elite pass rushers in the league. Knows how to get to the quarterback with a variety of moves. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. Fans do love the long ball, don't they? And he already found his guy once. Tried to give him another chance there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Couldn't connect. But as you alluded to, he does have that touchdown from earlier. Trying to keep him in the rhythm. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. They begin the drive with Charles. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL. And a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses. And now we're seeing it in the NFL. Those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield. Similar to that one. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big-time play right there. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And a look at the Steelers' defensive unit. Lawrence Timmons comes from a long line of productive Florida State players. And when I say productive, I usually mean spectacular. Again, it's Charles. 
And he'll be taken down at the 34. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And now it's a third and four situation for the offense. Now it's Smith. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well. Every now and then, they don't come down with the football. And his kick is good. Oh, he just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And they are on the board, trailing now 6-3. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense and over the post. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Yeah, they were in field goal range the last time out but couldn't connect. And it's early in the game, so I don't think that the confidence just goes entirely out of, you know, running your kicker back out there. But let's face it, some coaches have a little bit less patience for that than others. Let's see if they call the game differently now in terms of what they do on drives and not try and settle for field goals. Eight yards to go here on second down. And they're going to go soft on the corners. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. And both guys were there, but it falls incomplete. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Now it's Roethlisberger. Out left side here to Bryant. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses. And now a whistle and a timeout called by the kicking team. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Back deep for Kansas City, DeAnthony Thomas. Fielded just inside the 20. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Here's Smith now on second down. Going to look deep for Wilson. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground and it brings up third. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks to, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. Short yardage situation. Here's Charles. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together, 
for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think of run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. On second down, here's Smith. And now the ball's loose. Smith loses it. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now a first down carry by Bell. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I go all the way back to college with Le'Veon Bell, one of the better body transformations I've seen from a big, thick power back to the guy we see now who can do everything. And two years ago, of course, last year the injury, but two years ago over 1,300 yards. I think they think he can top that this year. I don't think there's any question about it. Another pistol look here. To throw here, Roethlisberger. Backing up. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Trying to get it there to Martavis Bryant. And they're going to have a third down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. On third down, Roethlisberger. And the third down pass falls incomplete. Marcus Wheaton was the one he was looking for. And that's going to make it fourth down. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. It'll be spotted on the right hash. A 52-yard attempt. And this one is right down the middle. And the lead will increase to six now. It's nine to three. So they recover the fumble but could not take advantage of the short field. They do get three. And no one ever turns down three points going up on the board. But the offense will go to the sidelines wondering what if, while the defense on the other side, they'll celebrate holding them to just a field goal after giving up such bad field position. The Chiefs offense now making their way back onto the field. And last time the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territories. No chance to get away there for Smith as he goes down. Javon Hargrave, the big rookie from South Carolina State, in there to drop him. And that will go into the books as the first sack of his young NFL career. To throw on second down is Smith. To the right side, it's Kelsey. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Give him 16 yards on the play. And that'll lead here to a third down. Now, coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Looking for Macklin, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Ryan Shazier. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. Short throw pick six right there. Those linebackers, they love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. Oh, it's a fake. They'll try and throw for it. Now on the return here, we've got an injured player down there. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And they'll start in a hole here as he's brought down at the 11-yard line. And now here comes Kansas City. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light there. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. 
shift together here from the D-line. Tenth carry now for Jamal Charles. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. If Jamal Charles plays here in 2016, I think five was the operative number for him. Five 1,000-yard years before last season, but only five games played in 2015. For the current Chiefs all-time leading rusher. A first down carry here for Charles. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. That was a good, strong run there. And while it won't pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe something they can build on as this game continues. Following the penalty, here's Charles. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. On second down, Jamal Charles. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. His favorite target, Travis Kelsey, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up fourth down. So on fourth down, Dustin Colquitt to punt for KC. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And a quick throw here. That's complete. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense. Exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. Over the middle here to Brown. Antonio Brown, kiss him goodbye. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Antonio Brown, 85 yards. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. And he atones for his miss the first time around as this one is up and good to extend their lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. And out come the Chiefs now. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Good throw, good catch, and the post route successful for the offense. Really difficult on the defender. He got moved out of the middle of the field and tried to scramble to recover, but it was too late to stop the completion. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Jeremy Macklin, the intended receiver, and it'll be second and ten. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. Now it's Smith. Wide open receiver complete. And he's brought down. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to Heinz Field after this. Oh, 
On first down, Smith looking deep here for Macklin. Now a battle for the football. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Jeremy Macklin high in the air to bring it in. And the Chiefs are able to cut into this lead. A sensational one-handed grab in the end zone for the score. Looked like you at the Davis Turkey Bowl every year in the backyard in Orlando, Florida. Oh, you're so kind. That's definitely in my mind. But how about this? They always tell guys going after the ball, the receivers especially, you got to have a single-minded obsession to go get it. How about going up with a single hand and making that happen? I don't know if it gets much better than what we just saw there. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Charles, you think Big Ben is happy to have Antonio Brown on the other side of his passes? You know he is, but he also expects it. And this is how their offense runs best. When those two get together, especially early, and continue to do it throughout the game, the end result is the one that we're seeing right now. They're ahead on the board. It has been early and often. It's a gain of 14 there, and the Steelers are going to have a first down. And an electric scamper there from the second-round pick in 2013 out of Michigan State. And how about the way he's remade his body in the NFL? You remember him back at Michigan State? Big, thick, bruising runner. Yeah, he had some speed, he had some agility, but now he's slimmed down and he's gotten even quicker, which has led to more runs like the one we just saw there. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Second down following the incompletion. They'll come out in the pistol. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And he is going to lose yardage here. He lost. And the Chiefs are going to signal for and be granted another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So now a third and 12 with an extra defender here in the secondary. A nickel look. Here's Roethlisberger. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. It's a gain of six on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Back to throw, Smith. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Charles the low set back. He'll get the football here. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. And the Steelers signal for another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. And he can't come up with a pick. Nearly his second of the game. Instead, fourth down. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now. They've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. 
Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Give him seven on the play, and it'll be second down. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Now Roethlisberger to throw on. Now Ben hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. This is Bell on the dump off. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. It's an 8-yard pickup, and it'll be fourth down. So we reach halftime here in the Steel City with the Steelers on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. To throw here, Roethlisberger. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it, and boy, the reward was there. Big, big pickup. And guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end of the half situation. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The NFL sack leader from 2014, Justin Houston, in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. And an extra DB here for the Chiefs on third down. Pass situation. Now it's Roethlisberger, a screen to Bell. Nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. I know you've got a baseball background, right? A little bit. Started yeah. in minor league ball. Yeah, you did some of that, right? What do they do when they do the signals? An indicator, right? It Tells starts... you whether it goes or not, yeah. Yeah, whether the play's on or not. How about the indicators offensive linemen give when they're getting ready to run a screen pass? And if those get red, <laughs> well, we just saw that there, didn't we? No game. No game. Deciphered it and finished the play off. Nearly a huge return, as it is still a very good one. 24 yards, and the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. Over. 
They'll try and get the running game going with Jamal Charles. Shreds the tackle. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. They'll keep it on the ground with Charles again, and he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. From the 50, it's Smith. Going up top. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Ryan Shazier. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. And the Steelers set to take the field. They got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer. Create space for our runners. And let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Antonio Brown with touchdown number three in the game and six on the year. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be taken in at the one. And it'll be taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. And now here comes Kansas City. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. <laughs> Coaches, that's all they talk about turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. He's going to try and go deep again. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. I like the boldness and I like that they took a shot downfield, but it was well covered. He's able to get a hand in and knock it away. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. On second and ten, Smith. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. On any passes in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. And Pittsburgh with six defensive backs in the game here on third down. And it's complete to Kelsey. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Play fake for Charles. Now Smith. Wide open receiver complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to... Talk to your... And now the ball's loose. Smith loses it. 
And it's picked up by the Steelers. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, to see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. A gain of three, second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. Again, it's Bell. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. They need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. And on third and eight, defensively, they're going to beef up the secondary. Six defensive backs. He gets it to Brown. Good play. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. Antonio Brown, A.B., with just one hand to complete that catch. Is there anything he can't do? He has just continued to impress year after year, hasn't he? He has never forgotten that he wasn't considered an elite receiver coming out of college. I think every snap, he takes it upon himself to prove that he should have been. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big game. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Really good, solid run right there, and they did it from a four-wide receiver set. If you're an offensive coordinator, they used to tell people, hey, we're going to throw the football. Now they use four receivers on the field to spread things out. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger taking it in. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. And they wasted no time right down near the goal line, and they just sneak it in. Just do what you need to do. Big guys going up front have the field general, the leader, just fall in behind them. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20. Call it the 21-yard line. And now here comes Kansas City. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> a dump off for Charles. Give him 13 on the pickup there. Good enough for a Kansas City first down. Back now in Pittsburgh. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. and 10 Smith screen pass to Charles and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39 it's a gain of five and that'll bring up second down second down to the offense needing five yards for a second there I thought that might break big screen pass looked like it was coming together looked like there was an open and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack Face mask penalty, and Charles, you were a defender. You know sometimes in the heat of the moment, it's hard to keep your hands away from that face mask. Sometimes you just get out of position as a defender when you're trying to make a tackle, so you end up flailing away, and your hand gets into the wrong spot. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it. An in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind, he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. He's going to go deep for Conley. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. Now they go screen. It's complete. 
And he loses the football a second time. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And a terrific return there. They're finally able to corral him down near the 11-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the score that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. This is Bell, and they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one, maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. Nine yards to go. It's third down. Now Roethlisberger going to hand the bell. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Yeah, let me puff out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. This is taken about seven yards deep. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. And I think he was able to get back on it. He was. So they will get the ball after all, but that could have been a disaster. And now here comes Kansas City. And last time they coughed it up led to a field goal they're fortunate that it only led to a field goal but still they're not happy about it could you sense the relief though when oh, they only gave up the field yeah. goal and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown but they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession the coach will just be relieved though if they recoup with a score here right i think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it down here punching the end zone without turning it over going for the deep ball and they went big on first down. Proves unfruitful. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it. What people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Now, that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time, that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. They come up in an offset eye. They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. He's going to air one out. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by Ryan Shazier. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bash, <laughs> Super toe. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. And having built that kind of a lead, they're able to do whatever they want right now. All momentum on their side, especially now running the football. Yeah, you're talking about a defense being on their toes. They don't know what's going to hit them next at this point. No, they went from toes to heels, and they're trying to figure out how to get back to the toes part. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. A reverse is never called just to get one or two yards. It's often called to get a big, big play. The defense was having none of it on that one. 
They snipped it out and stuffed it. A gain of a yard gets them back where they started. Now it's third and ten. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. So they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. On third down, Roethlisberger looking for Green, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the free safety, Eric Berry. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. Now the Chiefs offense, they get ready to head on the field. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Now a 20th carry here for Jamal Charles. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31-yard line. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. Now Jamal Charles on third down. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. Time for a break. This one, all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Now a first down throw. It's Smith. He's got Wilson, middle of the field. Call it a pickup of seven. And that'll make this a second down. Offense staying ahead of the chains here, second and three. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. They control the clock, they control the ball, and that way you often control the game. A loss of a yard and it brings up four. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. Desperation time for Smith on fourth down. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. Well, the feel that I get on this is that they felt like three was just not going to be enough after getting this deep into their territory. And, Charles, correct me if I'm wrong, but it didn't even look like they hesitated there. They knew they wanted to go for it. That tells me that during the week, they were thinking about these situations, and they feel like maybe... They're just the better team, and they want to go ahead and prove it conclusively. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. They come out here in the eye. From the four, it's second and goal. They go back to the ground now with Charles. And he's going to take it into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. Jamal Charles, his second touchdown on the season. And the Chiefs are able to draw a bit closer. And they will line up now for the two-point try. Three, 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 three. Here's Smith looking to throw. And he's got it for the two-point conversion. So they tack on a pair more here to narrow that deficit a bit further. So despite the huge deficit, they're going to keep fighting. Here comes the onside kick. And this doesn't work. The Steelers recover it. Now they're down big here in the fourth. They had to try the onside kick. Can't fault them for the effort at least. No, you can't at all. And if nothing else, now you've put something that you're trying to practice, right, that you, you've worked on into a game situation, and now you can go back and dissect it. So if you need it again sometime, maybe you'll find a better way to do it. But, yeah, this game's pretty much done for them. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. All right, Charles, so you win the game. Not only do you get the W in the left-hand column, you get some momentum for the coming week. 
now when you go into the week and you're telling the guys what mistakes have to be corrected, what we have to do to win going forward, you have their full attention. They're excited, they're happy, and they know if they can build that momentum, they can ultimately achieve all their goals. So for Pittsburgh, they're on a nice early roll as they move to 3-1 with a win here. And they'll get to stay home again next week as the New York Jets come to town. Meanwhile, for the Chiefs, they'll sink now to 0-4. And, and fortunately for them, they'll have the early bye next week as they return to action in Week 6. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field.